All right, so you want to learn 2v2. A lot of people think 2v2 is all about mechanics and solo play. And for what I've seen, that's absolutely wrong. I've been maining 2v2 for over a year now. And so today we're going over my three step patent pending process to rank 2v2 that will make this game mode free low. Also to help guide this framework, I've watched almost every episode of Flake's 2v2 Road to SSL. And so as this video progresses, we'll be using in-game examples from his series, moving from Diamond all the way up to GC to show you how this stuff actually works in-game. If you're new here, my name's Luke. I'm a top 0.1% rated coach with over 6K combined hours, and I'm mainly known for running the Grand Champ Roadmap, where we take Plat, champ ranked players up to grand champ in just six weeks flat so if you're plat diamond or champ watching and you want that gc title dm my discord with the keyword gc and we can talk details about coaching my discord will be first linked down below otherwise enjoy the video all right rule number one corner forcing or if you want a simpler name for the rule no challenges now the number one aspect of flakes 2v2 games is his no challenge principle if the opponent gets the ball in their corner at midfield or really anywhere bar like shooting at his net flakes doesn't challenge and you won't either remember this if their touch isn't threatening don't waste your time on it hammer fake challenges everywhere on the field offense in their corner at midfield everywhere except for one spot we'll cover in a second your fake challenging this goes even as you shadow back through the midfield if you watch you'll notice flakes never challenges it's all fake challenges because he's doing something I like to call corner forcing. Here's what you need to understand for this to work. Believe it or not, your defensive corner is the best place to have the ball in 2v2. You might think, Luke, isn't the corner bad because the ball's by my net? Well, yes, but no. Yeah, you don't want the ball to get in front of your net, but the corner is actually super safe. It's just basic risk reward. In your corner, they basically got to do a predictable center or take a really off angle shot that you can cover defensively, even if you're solo. At the same time that the risk for you is low, the reward is actually huge because baiting your opponent into overextending in your corner is actually super easy. And I'm going to show you how. Picture this. Imagine your first man in the corner. And I know I promised I wouldn't talk about much first man, but imagine you're first in the corner. You've got backup. The other team has one first man in their corner and their last man is playing backup at midfield or something as well. Let's say the opposing first man commits here. Situation number one is you you get a beat. Well, in this case, the odds instantly shift because you've got a teammate behind you. You just beat their first man. And now the field opens up into a full on 2v1 with space. Obviously a good scenario. What about situation number two? Let's say you get beat. Well, if you get beat, 90% of the time, the ball's just going to roll past your corner in front of your net. Who's waiting there? your teammate. So it's a 1v1 between your second man teammate with the ball and their second man, but you're approaching your net, backing up your teammate, and the opposing X first man is now overextended in your corner. What do we call that? That's a win win exactly what we want zooming out i'm just going to ask you to store this in your memory we want to recreate this situation over and over again in your twos matches as much as possible hopefully this is starting to ring some bells from ranny's 1v1 master class but if it doesn't that's totally fine let's jump back to when the opponent has the ball and this is going to start to make a lot of sense back to midfield opponent has the ball so you fake challenge and you're shadowing what's corner forcing have to do with anything well if you understand that your corner is like your home base what we're doing on defense is trying to force the ball here notice how flakes shadows but never tries to dunk the opponent even when he can because if he dunks first man right now it's just a race between his second man and their second man in other words that's a 1v1 remember flakes only takes winning bets no leaving things to chance especially with your teammate we always fake challenge into shadow and corner force until we get to step number two step number two single jump defense once you start corner forcing, you have to understand how to actually play this right. The key to doing so is single jump defense. 
Here's where a lot of people go wrong. When most people get on defense, they play like Jimmy. As you may know, Jimmy doesn't have great shadow mechanics. He's uncomfortable with his recoveries, not too good on the walls. And so what does he do on defense? He dodges and flips into every single challenge. And if he can, he always booms the ball away, right to the open arms of the opposing second man. Please guys, don't be like Jimmy. Chaz. Chaz understands single jump defense. Instead of knocking the ball away, Chaz covers everything using a single jump. Whether it's blocking the shot or just stopping the center from the corner, Chaz uses a single jump. This allows him to save the ball and keep it close to follow up. Chaz neutralizes attacks and turns them right back into 2v1s for his team. You want to be like Chaz. All right, whatever that was aside, single jump defense is actually so broken. And I don't know why I'm the only one who talks about it. Everybody always says, clear it to your corners. And that's fine. Why not just stop the ball, catch it, and go score? Watch how Flakes uses single jump defense, whether it's on the wall, on the ground. When the ball is rolling your way, let it bounce off the wall, and then just use single jumps to control it off the wall or control it on the ground and move it up the field to bait opponents in, shut down their attacks, and you'll be able to turn possessions into breakaways for your team over and over again. Step number three, advantage offense. Now that you understand corner forcing and single jump defense, it all comes full circle with advantage offense. Advantage offense is all about this idea that we're not trying to actually score. Yep, we're not trying to actually score, we're just trying to set up 2v1. Let's go back to where we left off. So you just played single jump defense after you corner forced and baited the opponent in. Now you've got the ball and it's a breakaway. What do you do? Well, let's go back to our friend, Jimmy. As you know, Jimmy gets nervous when he gets the ball. He still thinks ground to air dribbles are really the only comp way to score. When Jimmy gets it, he usually spends three to four seconds deciding what to do and eventually just decides to go for the breezy flick anyway. By the time another three to four seconds has passed, he's managed to get the ball on top of his car. That's about the time he gets demo. Chaz understands that since it's a 2v1, it doesn't really matter how good his outplay is. All he needs to do is get the ball downfield before the opponent's second man can get back while keeping it sort of close to eventually force some sort of a commit out of the goalie. So Chaz gets the ball, he busts it downfield to avoid getting demoed. He tries to beat the goalie, sometimes he does, but other times he just goes for a 50-50 and his teammate cleans it up anyways. Once again, we want to be like Chaz. The point is, the way you should convert a majority of your goals in 2v2 is just by stacking the odds in your favor. You only play defense with two people. That way you always have a double layer and you switch onto offense when the opponents only have one defender. Wouldn't it be so much easier if you got to play defense with two people at all times and attack 2v1? Obviously sounds simple, but go watch a replay of yours and you'll see that you're just trying to force flicks when they have two back over and over again. When I tell this to people, it's like I'm opening the gates. Seriously, help yourself out and stop making 2v2 so complicated. Of course, we're going to start to cover some more nuanced tips to make this stuff work in a second, but hopefully the groundwork is starting to set in for you right now. In order for this whole thing to work like a cycle, remember step one leads into step two, leads into step three, leads hopefully back into step one. All of this requires one major step that you don't overcommit. Remember, you need to be ready to corner force at all times. And if you overcommit on offense, for example, you dive in upfield on some miracle center from your teammate, or you aggro challenge the opponent after your teammate just got beat himself in the corner, you won't be back to shadow and restart the process. This is a 100% of the time thing. Not like a, if you're champ two plus, you don't have to do this. No, this is a 100% of the time thing. Never commit on the opposing half 
of the field. The minute your breakaway starts to fizzle, GTFO, grab pads, grab boost, get behind your idiot teammate, and wait at half field, ready to fake challenge, into shadow, into corner fours, into single jump defense, etc., etc. If you're watching this in a watch party right now, pause and make sure nobody's sleeping in the back of class, because like I said, the strategy doesn't work <laughs> unless you do every step right. So once you've got this, take a deep breath because you're ready for the fun stuff. Let's talk about the bonuses. Now that you understand the three step framework at face value, I can dive into some of the tips and tricks to make it that much easier. Here are some common questions to things you might be wondering right now. Number one, Luke, what if my ball control sucks and I toss it every time I get the ball in my corner? Well, that doesn't change the fact that this is the meta strategy and will continue to be for as long as I can see. If you wanna win, you have to learn how to play the right way. Learn shadow defense, get comfortable in your corner. It will come with time and yes, you'll have to deal with getting scored on for a bit, but you'll probably get the hang of it quicker than you think. Absolutely, don't say this play style doesn't work for you. It's how good players play. So if you say that, you're just saying you're bad. I get it, it's gonna feel weird to play like this at first, but like anything, you'll learn what I mean. You'll start to understand how things fit together. With time, you can always come back and rewatch this later on if some things start to slip down the line. Number two, Luke, what about boost? This is actually important, so please listen up. One of the central things Flakes does to make this whole strategy work is defend his boost. When you're corner forcing and playing single jump defense, you must guard your corner boost like your life depends on it. As soon as you recognize a hit by the opponent is non-threatening, think to yourself, grab the boost, avoid the bump. Grab the boost, avoid the bump. Grab the boost, avoid the bump. This is how you shut down pressure. If you don't guard boost, you'll end up running out and you won't have enough boost to hold off an attack. Number three, Luke, what about mechanics? Ah, uh, yes, legendary question. The way I like to think of it is think of mechanics as your finishing moveset. Basically, you want to play the whole game just anchoring on good movement and recoveries. Mechanics are relevant, and you mainly want to use the fancy stuff to put the nail in the coffin once you get that one-on-one -on -one situation. The goal is not to force your mechanics through a double layer of defense. When you're on defense, on the other hand, you of course want to use mechanics like aerials if you need to shut down a shot, Obviously, don't let them shoot from point blank just because you don't want aerial, but think mechanics are my finishing moveset. That served me well, and I hope it'll serve you well too. Number four, so Luke, how do I score without mechanics? Great question, and for that, I have one word, angles. You get the ball, play it out to the side, wrap around it, and power side cut. A little misdirection takes no commit from you, but is impossible to defend properly. Way better than a flick too, because you keep possession after. Number five, what do I do if my teammates are ball chasing? Simple, let them. It sucks, but trying to assert dominance is not alpha, it's just stupid. Let your idiots be idiots and cover for them. You'll win more in the long run. Number six, but what if it's my turn to go and my opponent is still ball chasing upfield? First, there's no such thing as your turn to go. You go when your teammate decides you can go. That's it. Wait at half field and do not push up a second man too close to their goal. Remember, you are last man and you're not gonna commit unless it's clean, free, safe anyways. So you don't need to be that close to the play. If you simply stop trying to force goals all the time and you just chill and wait, you're gonna get way more opportunities in the long run. Number seven, but what if the ball is rolling up the wall and I have an air dribble set up and to our backfield? Fake the air dribble because that's what they're expecting anyways. Let it roll down the wall, power side cut, GG. Long story short, stop going for cross field air dribble setups when they have two people back in that. Don't be a Jimmy. Number eight. Oh, this is one of my favorites. But Luke, what if the opponents are monkeying? Uh, translation, just playing like every average player out there. In that case, just do exactly what I taught you in this video with a special emphasis on baiting them into your corner, controlling your boost, and controlled 50-50s. Trust me, this framework counters monkey challengers so long as you bait them into your corner and please 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 control your boost monkeys don't do well without boost so let them overcommit and then hit them when they're not looking if you can be quick to turn the ball back upfield when they overcommit you're gonna start to love monkey challengers number nine what if my opponent starts an aerial play 
Well, if you're champ below, honestly, just wait on the ground for them to fall and flop down and then take free ball. However, if the aerial strike is threatening, you should send someone up on your team to shut it down. And if you're closer, that's you. Otherwise, if you wait on your goal line, the whole double layer of defense thing kind of goes out the window and you'll probably get scored on. This is more concern for the higher ranks, but you know, still good to know for those below GC right now. Number 10, what about kickoffs? This is a great question and this one's tricky, but I agree with Flakes here. The problem with cheating up in 2v2 is if you do, you have to challenge afterward which if you think back, blatantly violates our whole no commit principle. This is why kickoffs are super unpredictable and also suck. The best option is to bind the on your left and on your right quick chats to your D-pad and just spam those going for back boost every time. Honestly, this tip will probably get a couple free wins for you. So seriously, actually just go and bind them. Half the quick chats are completely useless anyways. Whew. Wow, I was gonna do more, but inadvertently that's that's perfectly 10 bonuses so uh on that note in conclusion fake challenge welcome to your corner single jump defense power side cut don't commit most importantly thanks for watching